Hi, this is Hot Chocolate with Paul. I'm remembering what happened on September 11, 2001. If you'd like to hear the story from my perspective. At the time, I was working for Channel 10, WHEC, the NBC affiliate here in Rochester, New York. My job was working as a control room engineer. I was working evenings at the time, roughly 3 in the afternoon until 12 midnight. So the morning of September 11, 2001, I was up. I had plans to go shopping. So as I was driving to the grocery store, I had WCMF radio on, and I was listening to the morning show talk about a plane that had just crashed into the World Trade Center. Now, being an avid enthusiast for aviation and a history buff, I remembered that there was a time in the 1940s when a military plane crashed in the fog into the side of the Empire State Building. Now at that time, that plane left a big gaping hole on one side of the Empire State Building, which was ultimately fixed up. And today, most people probably don't even know that that ever happened. I mean, that was purely an accident, and it was in the fog. Uh, apparently, the crew just lost their way and didn't know what they were flying into. So 2001, with that in mind, I was listening to the discussion on WCMF, and heard them talking about airspace being restricted around the New York City area. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, that's got to be pretty chaotic with three major airports and other lots of other aviation activity happening in that area. Uh, that's going to cause some major delays across the country. I sure had no idea what was headed our way. So I went about my grocery shopping trip. Uh, I should say that I was on my own. Um, my wife at the time, Mary, was at work as a school teacher, so she was in school, and our three kids were all in school. So I was by myself. And while I was shopping, I kept thinking about the air, air, air traffic situation and uh, all this chaos happening with the air traffic control. I had no idea what was going on. I, I really believed that what had happened was an accident. So I got back out in my car and uh, curious, I turned the radio on again and that's when I heard that uh, a plane had crashed into the Pentagon in Washington and another plane had crashed into a field in Pennsylvania. And that's when this massive fear started overtaking me. Like, what the hell is going on? So I got home. I left the groceries in the car because I wanted to quick turn the TV set on and see what was going on. And I turned it on and was just blown away by all the smoke billowing out from what I knew where the World Trade Center could be. I, I, I didn't even realize that one building had already collapsed. There was so much smoke. So while I was watching this, my mother called me and she asked me, was I watching TV? Did I see what was going on? Did I see a building collapse? And I said, no, I just started watching this. I didn't know what was going on. And then as I was talking to her while the TV was on, that's when I saw the second building collapse. So this one, I did witness collapse. I was like, whoa. I mean, this, this was all so shocking about everything that was going on. So I talked with my mother for a few more minutes, hung up. And very shortly after that, I got another phone call from somebody who worked for a newspaper somewhere. And uh, to be honest, I don't even remember what newspaper it was. See, at the time, I was president of the Rochester Pilots Association, and they were calling me to get my thoughts on air traffic space 
being flows. And all I could say was, I'm just learning about all of this right now, and I don't know what is going on. So if they publish that quote, I have no idea. So I continued watching. Uh, I know that I was supposed to go to a meeting that afternoon from an organization that I belonged to. And uh, I just sent out a message and I said, um, I'm not going to the meeting. I think I'm going to go in. I'm probably going to go into work early because I don't know what they're going to need me for at the TV station. And that became my plan. And, and sure enough, my boss called me not long after that and asked me if I could come in at 1.30 instead of 3 o'clock. The morning crew would typically go home at 1.30 and then they'd have one or two people fill in the gap between the morning crew and the evening crew. So we needed a full crew to do not to do live newscasts. And between 1.30 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon, typically there would not be anything live from our studio. So that's why we were down to two people. But he wanted to make sure that there were enough people at the station in case we did decide to do something live on the air. So after watching coverage, news coverage on TV for a while, I decided to bring the groceries in. I got them put away. And then I got to work by 1.30. And we were just carrying the news feed from NBC, so there really wasn't much to do. So I stood around in the control room, talking with people, watching what was on NBC, and um, just ready to do whatever was needed at our TV station. So 3 o'clock came. Um, I relieve the person who was ahead of me in what's called master control. I like to say master control is similar to what you would call a DJ at a radio station, only instead of playing records and commercials and other announcements, I'm playing TV shows and commercials and whatever else needs to go on the air. And I'm also the person that's sitting there, put in what we call sub-control or the other control room on the air so they can do a live broadcast from the studio. So my job that day, my assignment that day, was to be in master control. And typically you would do one job for about a half a day and then switch over to another job for the other half of the day. Uh, my supervisor for the evening crew came up to me and said he wanted me to stay in master control all day uh, through my lunch break or I should say my dinner break, and just stay right there because he wanted everybody to be in a consistent place so that everything was consistent as far as the entire work shift would go. So we were broadcasting live coverage from NBC, but we also had our local tape programs running at the time on a tape machine, even though they weren't on the air, but we were ready to cut two the videotape in case we lost coverage from NBC or for whatever reason they decided to end coverage. Um, station management had also decided that we were not going to carry any commercials while this coverage was going on. So this is where television becomes a public service because from that point on, and I believe it was for the next two or three days, there were no commercials aired on Channel 10 or any of the TV stations, uh, it became a public service and the TV stations carried this live coverage of what we needed to know without making any money because no commercials were aired. It was public service. So from three o'clock in the afternoon until I, I guess it was shortly before midnight, I sat in master control running NBC coverage, and our news department had decided that we were going to do some um, shorter-than-usual newscasts, basically local updates about things that were happening in Rochester due to um, planes crashing. <clears throat> I want to say that a lot of people believe there was a government conspiracy. Um, being where I was that day in a broadcast station, a television station, 
being around news people, seeing the kind of information we were getting from the NBC television network has me totally convinced that these conspiracy theories are completely wacko. I'm sorry if you believe that, but I had a role to play that day, and I, I can't even begin to describe what it felt like to be in a position that I was in. And it's, in a way, it's hurtful to hear people come up with these wild and crazy conspiracy theories. Um, I've seen the programs that came on in later years about how the building collapsed, how those kinds of things happened. And from a scientific and logical point of view, it all makes sense to me. So that's all I have to say about the conspiracy theories. And that's all I'm, I, that's all I want to say about it. It's, it's, it's just, it's BS. I'm sorry, but it is. So back to September 11, 2001. Um, NBC was not holding back on replaying the coverage of planes crashing into the building over and over and over. Now, you have to remember that on that day, nobody knew what was going on. Nobody knew who was flying those planes, why the planes were purposely crashed into buildings and on the ground in Pennsylvania. We just didn't know. All of that was to come out in the days, weeks, and months, and years into the future. So my state of mind when I went to bed that night was um, I, I, I didn't know where this country was headed. I didn't know where the world was headed. You know, was this the beginning of some major invasion by another country? And I, as I was falling asleep, I had images of planes crashing into buildings over and over and over. I have a memento of the work that I did on September 11th, 2001 at the TV station. A program log is a paper log that is printed out and includes all of the TV shows and commercials and news programs. All the programs and items that go on the air during the day. So years later, I think it was about 10 years later when uh, the program logs for that year were no longer needed. They were set up to be disposed of and shredded. I got permission to grab a copy of the one from September 11, 2001. So I've had it in my possession now since somewhere around 2011 or 12 or something like that when it was no longer needed. So... What happens in here is we have the program. So in this particular case, uh, the Today Show began at 7 o'clock in the morning. It ended at 8.55 and 34 seconds. That's when we did a local newscast. So these are all the commercials that ran during the Today Show and the local news cut-ins. The names of the person that we won in master control at the time are signed because it becomes a legal document. So we remember that the first plane crashed into the building around 8.45. So this is what was happening at the time. We were running a commercial. This is the commercial break, 8.45. And then I know that the Today Show carried some of the coverage as soon as they realized that a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. And they started with, no, I guess they started with a special report. So at 9 o'clock in the morning, when the Today Show was over, it should have been live with Regis and Kelly, but instead a special report was in. So the person that was on master control at the time hand wrote in special report, World Trade Center Fire. And, of course, at 9 o'clock in the morning, that's all we knew what it was. And in the back, we have what we call a discrepancy sheet. So if something is out of the ordinary during the broadcast day, we would write in what had happened and 
what was done about it. So, as the day went on, there are no times in here for any of the commercials. It was just a special report all day long. Special report continued. Right through the day. 12 new news was preempted. I signed on at, one, uh, at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's written as 1500 because we did it in the 24 hour clock. So I wrote in things like News Crawl and, you know, other shows that didn't air. The Rosie O'Donnell show should have aired but never did that day. So here at uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, we did a local news update that lasted until about 5.08. And this continued through the entire evening. So as the day went on, into the evening, I was still there, going all the way until, let's see what happened at 11 o'clock in the evening. We did a full half hour newscast, local newscast, uh, wrapping up what happened in Rochester that day. But we did not run any commercials. It was just a full half hour special report type in newscast that we did. So that ended at 11.30. We went back to NBC and then I signed off at 11.38 that evening and went home. That's the story of what my life was like on September 11, 2001. In the days after that, when I went back to work, uh, we continued our coverage for two or three more days. And eventually we started getting back into our regular programming where the station could then start running commercials again and start making some money again. So that's my memories of September 11, 2001. This has been Hot Chocolate with Paul. Have a good day.